Nuclear fusion is considered to be the holy grail of clean energy. Previously on Razor, we visited ITER, the world's largest nuclear fusion experiment being built in the south of France. In a reaction chamber known as a tokamak, they will achieve fusion by creating and containing plasma in a magnetic field. So here we come into the tokamak pit, and this is where you appreciate the scale of the tokamak. This entire space will be full from ground to ceiling with the tokamak. And the entire tokamak will sit inside this space, so you will never be able to come here. So here, exactly where we'll be standing will be extremely cold. And then just like a little bit up there. Zero. Yeah, almost absolute zero. And then as you just go up there in the middle, you imagine it'll be 100 million degrees. But how will all this work to one day provide power? An atom of hydrogen is made up of one positively charged proton and one negative electron. It also has two variants or isotopes. Deuterium has one proton and one neutral neutron. Tritium has two neutrons. In a fusion reaction, deuterium and tritium fuse to form a helium atom and a high-speed neutron. In a fusion reactor, the high-speed neutrons will be slowed down by a denser metal wall surrounding the reaction. This slowing will release heat, which in turn will produce steam, which will then drive turbines. It may be possible to achieve nuclear fusion in other ways. First Light Fusion in Oxford are currently experimenting with what's called inertial confinement fusion. So we're working on a new method for inertial fusion, which we call projectile fusion, where we fire a high-velocity projectile that hits into a, a fuel pellet, which we call the target. And that target focuses some of the energy into, of the projectile into hydrogen. Machine 3 is an electromagnetic launcher, so it uses electromagnetic forces to launch a projectile to extreme velocities. Machine 3, or M3, is their latest prototype. They're currently running a series of tests, and they aim to fire a shot or pulse as often as possible to improve their methods. Just been told that there may not be a shot today. It's been a lot of stopping and starting. But the good thing is, we get to go into the M3 enclosure to see exactly how it works. OK, cool. after you. Thank you. So this is M3? This is M3, yeah. So M3 is a pulsed power generator. Now what that means is we store electrical energy up over a long period of time and we release that in a very short period of time. So uh, we store the energy in capacitors. So these big blue things that you can see, they're high energy storage capacitors. A capacitor is similar to a battery in that it stores electrical energy. The difference is that a capacitor can release a lot of energy very quickly, often in a second or less, unlike a battery which releases low amounts of energy over a long time. We generate huge currents in the load, so up to 14 million amps we've seen on this uh, experiment so far, and we put that current into our electromagnetic launch load. To put that into perspective, 14 million amps is equivalent to about 500 lightning bolts. The average household power supply is only 100 amps. There's no electrical hazard, everything is perfectly safe. Okay. It's just the trip hazards that we've got to deal with. Wow, gosh, so the projectile and the target are in here. That's right, yeah, this is, the, uh, this is where the experiment takes place. So right within the centre of this vacuum chamber, we've got the electromagnetic launch load. You can see there's six limbs arranged radially around the vacuum chamber, and the current flows down the limbs and into the vacuum chamber. There's a vacuum power feed through that we've just stood on top of. The current then converges within the vacuum chamber, and ultimately it converges down to a load, which is this size. So this has 14 million amps flowing through it, that creates a huge magnetic pressure between these two conductors. And you can see that very shiny five pence piece sized piece of metal that shoots up this chimney 
and that's the electromagnetic launch load. Now, so this is the electromagnetic launch side of the experiment, which is what M3 is used to do. The actual experiment then takes place on top of this electromagnetic launch load. Because so, that's the projectile, isn't it? This is the projectile, exactly, yeah. There's still a target in there. There's still a target, which I have here. So this target will be mounted on top of the load. The projectile strikes the bottom of the target, shocks propagate through the target, get focused and converge, and then they create the conditions with inside that, the gas within this target, to create the conditions that we need for fusion. And that's all happening in here. Exactly. The electric discharge creates a huge magnetic force, which fires the projectile at speeds of 20 to 30 kilometers per second. The target is a plastic cube containing a spherical cavity full of hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium. The impact generates a shock wave that travels through the cube, collapsing the sphere, which compresses the hydrogen for a tiny fraction of a second. It's this sudden compression that generates a plasma, potentially triggering the conditions for fusion. So we're eagerly awaiting to see the shot. What yeah. should we expect? So we charge the trigger system. We then charge M3. It takes about 50 seconds. There's a lot of anticipation. All of the people responsible for the diagnostics will give the go-ahead to make sure that they're OK. We then uh, we go dark 10 seconds before the shot. So that means that we, we isolate all of the, um, the vacuum equipment, all of the pumps go off all of the, uh, the gauges on the chamber go off and we make sure uh, that that's all disconnected from the system before we fire. There's a 10 second countdown and then we fire the shot and it's an almighty boom. It really is quite impressive. Some of the team are getting into hazmat suits. They're going to go into the M3 enclosure and try and figure out what the problem is. We've been waiting a long time for this shot and today it hasn't been happening so far so hopefully they'll get some answers. Every shot that does take place needs careful analysis using a range of diagnostics and high-speed imaging techniques. Hugo Doyle is head of experimental physics. So this diagnostic room serves three different areas. So this is one from our, one of our old shots, which we, we did actually on the gas gun, but it's a bit easier to interpret what's going on. So this is from this grey camera, and if I let it play, we get a nice film which is easy to interpret. And you can see our projectile coming in, and you can see it hitting our target. So as that target collapses, you get a shock moving through it in the gas, and that gas is getting hot and fast and beginning to glow. And then as it gets to the end, it's trapped in the rear of that cavity, and this is your, you know, your, your preliminary kind of inertial confinement event, which is what we're looking for. We're trying to make this projectile go faster and ultimately hit our fuel harder, use a bigger hammer. And then the second thing we're trying to do, which is a lot of you know, what the company's based around, is cleverer targets. And to put that in a different way, we're trying to more efficiently couple the energy from the projectile into the fuel. So if we can um, get that energy, uh, more of the energy quicker into the fuel, we'll compress that plasma, that gas, and get it hotter and denser. And with the two of those methods, we can get it hot enough and dense enough for long enough to fuse and give off neutrons and get that fusion event. So that eventually, uh, in the future, we're getting more energy out than we're putting in, and, that, and that's what fusion's all about. Just looking at the screens that would have been fired up had there been a shot today, but I've just had news that they're not actually going to be able to fire one. There's been some issues with the pressure gauge and it's preventing the shot being fired today. That's not to say it won't happen in the future, but unfortunately, I've missed seeing it this time. That's science. The research at First Light Fusion continues, and once they reach their goal of getting more energy out than they put in, they plan to supply power to the grid by a fusion pulse being created every five seconds. But this is still some way off, and for the next phase of experiments, they plan to build an even bigger machine. With ITER in France aiming to start their fusion experiments in 2025 and First Light Fusion making progress with inertial fusion, hopefully the dream of nuclear fusion power 
will soon be a reality. So much science in that story. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.